Eight at a time. Um, there could be no contact. Communication was at the worst. Um, spotting you couldn't do. Uh, you couldn't have any team workouts together. Basically, they couldn't even get a breakdown after a training session or a workout. So you lost a lot of that, you know, togetherness, relationship stuff. Um, it was just hard. It was hard to have everybody separate. You had you had a weight room set up in, a, in the weight room that was spread out with only eight eight players. You had another weight room set up in the indoor with eight players. So there was no. I mean, sometimes I didn't see I didn't see a guy all day because I was outside or inside or vice versa. So it was hard. It was really hard. We try to make the best of it, like everybody else, but. I think we lost a lot. Like we have these conversations about, well, this team needs to get more toughness, they need more leadership this year. I know you're not making excuses for it, but I would have to think that a lot of that comes from the things that were taken away. Absolutely, 100%, 100%, yeah. It's just hard, it's just, because everything was different. And um, you also had to be, from a physiological standpoint and a safety standpoint, you have to assume for those three months when they were home, they did nothing. So the progressions were a lot slower, just you know, oozing them in. And by the time you get them to the point where they would have been, camp started. Oh no, not here, camp didn't start. Oh, it did, and it didn't. So I think that affected us in every way. Did you sense the leadership issue because of that in the last year? Did you sense it's not the same because these guys are not put together all that cohesion? Yeah, I, I think if you're not in a position to lead, you really can't lead. Leadership is those daily experiences and you know setting a standard and making sure everybody's holding up to that standard. If you don't have a standard to set, how can you lead? It's, it's just, it's, it's extremely hard. Are you all caught up now? I think, yeah, I think we're caught up um, and we made really good progress over the winter. And, it's exciting now. I can't wait to get back and get started. And Ryan talked about how leadership was a real emphasis in the offseason. How did that manifest itself and where do you feel the leadership level is right now? Yeah, so again, you know, even sometimes I think you have to go through struggle um, to come out of it stronger. And some of our players last year played for the first time and there were struggles. And when you come out of it on the other side, now they kind of know what to expect. And now they, you know, some guys just, because they don't play, they feel like they can't be out in front of a group because they haven't stepped on the field and, you know, played. So you had a little bit of that. And then, you know, I think because of that, guys stepped up and really different mindset, completely different mindset. Nick, what do you, in terms of buying in, <clears throat> being all in, being, uh, what do you like about this group? Are they not as committed as three years ago? What do you, what's the makeup? What do you think of this, the age of the kids, et cetera? Yeah, I, I think again, a lot of these guys have experience on the field, um, have been in the program, now it's their turn. Um, and the, um, the leadership is, is on the right, trajectory and it's very exciting because um, I think they understand now what it is what it truly is what it means to be a leader because again just because you're a, just because you have a title sometimes as like being a leader that doesn't necessarily correlate or translate to actually being a leader and having influence on each other and holding that standard so it's pretty, it's pretty cool is that also a part of your job cultivating leadership I believe it is. I believe um, cultivating leadership because of the daily experiences on uh, putting them in that situation so they can lead, uh, whatever it may be. And coaches aren't involved a lot. Now it's, the rules have changed a lot here in the last five to ten years, but they're with us more than anybody. So um, you get to see that. You get to, you know, I think part of my job is to help drive the, the culture, whatever our culture, you know, which is the fight. You know, that's part of it, so, and help those guys through. Nick, how much easier is it to cultivate a culture when you have, and leadership when you have a second year starting to work? Oh, that's such pretty an important good. position. Though. It seems like it'd be easier to have leadership on your roster when you've got a guy at that position who's done it. Well, 
if you look back at history, history tends to repeat itself. So if you look at Justin Fields, his first offseason, never stepped on a field. And his second year, which is COVID, so you really can't use, you know, it's hard to say that one. But he was a different leader. He was a different player his second year. CJ has now gone through those struggles and the ups and downs. Now he kind of gets it. And I think it's going to be it's still going to be hard, but I think it'll be a little bit easier for him. Well, I'm assuming you saw him take those steps in practice and things like that when you're out there watching them all. Have you seen those steps in the weight room from CJ? Being a leader, not just, you know, in a huddle or you know, calling plays and stuff like that, but also when you guys are in the middle of December. Yeah, he, he, yeah he, uh, he's, he does a really good job when you're in that struggle with his with his guys, with his with his bull. I mean, it's it's good. It's good. Is it Ryan easier if it wasn't always like that. Right? <laughs> Early on, he didn't know no. Like where, no. Where was he, and where is he now? Um, he's much improved. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Has it been easier for him to do that leadership part? Because like Justin's kind of got ruined by COVID. His second yeah, year. you're right. Yeah. Wayne's only here for a year as a starter, and it's been a while since you guys have had a multi-year starting quarterback. In the normal world. Has it been maybe easier for CJ to kind of grow into that role this offseason because it is as normal as possible? I think it's easier than, than the, the examples you just gave. Um, but every day we're just trying to – I just want to make sure he sees it from all views, not just, you know, three-step drop. You got, you know, not just football, but from all views. Because part of being a leader is – Everybody's watching you, everybody's listening to you, everybody's feeling you. And if you don't have those three characteristics of being seen, being heard, and being felt, then you're really not a leader. And, you know, I sometimes have, a, I don't want to say an argument, but I have a view on being a leader that, you know, people say leader by example. I don't understand what that means. You mean you're doing what's expected, right? Leader by example, what? He just. But if, if, you're not, if you're not heard, if you're not felt by the guys next to you, and obviously if you're not seen, then you're not a leader. So if you don't have those three characteristics, you're not a leader. You have no chance to be a leader. So every day we just want to make sure that he's felt, he's heard, and he's seen in all those aspects. Which of those three aspects with quarterbacks have you seen that's usually taken the longest to play? Oh, boy. I, they're all different. They're all different. What about with him? What about with him? <laughs> um, he likes to talk. So like, he likes to talk, and he does a great job around a player, so you can hear him. Um, I think a lot of times it's just, I think his thing was learning how to work at that level, so being seen at the level that he needs to work at. And he always tells, I'm just a quarterback. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, you are the quarterback. So you got to get better at all of I was talking about how you guys have the squad during yeah, the yeah. workouts. Um, was he a leader, and are we allowed to know who the, all the other leaders are? Um, he was a leader, and um, are you allowed? The coach didn't want everybody to know. I'd say you're not allowed, but he was one. Um, he'll probably be one here in the summer. I, he better be one or more. Uh, and it, it was awesome. It was awesome to put those guys in that position and really be uncomfortable sometimes as a leader. And if you're not uncomfortable, Go through that struggle, you don't you don't learn. Are you guys like keeping score with the competition? Oh yeah, stuff? we keep score everything. Who squad won? Who won it last year? Oh god, I can't remember. We had eight squad we had twelve squads, I'm trying to think who won. Oh, squad squad ten won. I'm gonna assume that's not CJ squad. It was not CJ squad and I can't I'm trying to I got a blank right now. Awesome. Big hearted. Big hearted, um, you know, really um, wears his emotions on his sleeves at times, but really, really, really cares. He's a great kid. Can you give any kind of updates? No medical updates on anything. I can't. Yeah. Nick, that's not my job. What about, what about defensive? We're talking about CJ Live being the not only quarterback, but then the quarterback, the offense, the waiver. Like, what do you see from these guys defensively, the defensive leaders, that tell you that, that the leadership is going to be another level for what's happening? Uh, again, I think you got to look at. I just had told, just told, talked to some a recruit about. You know, last year you had back seven, zero starts.
quarterback, zero starts, never threw a pass. We won't even let him throw a pass. Not a freshman. Now it's completely different. So if you look at those guys that have played, been through it, the Tommy Eichenbergs, the, um, you know, obviously Zach Harrison, who was captain last year, um, Ronnie Hickman, um, you know, you'll have Josh Proctor back. You've got some guys that have been through that struggle, the inside guys that have been here forever, those fifth year guys. Um, and I think they, uh, they knew the importance of getting the defense right and doing better. Physically, um, were you caught off guard that JT was able to come in here as late as he did? Did you still? Yeah, that, 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 that's an outlier. That doesn't happen very often. It doesn't. So, I guess, like, from your perspective, since you finally got your hands on him normally, what does he look like? I mean, what, what does that mean now? He's, like he's that? much improved, and um, he should be able to, uh, obviously, bigger, faster, stronger, and more mature, and you know, been through the program now at least a year. I hadn't even been through a year. Um, well, he should take that next step. What made him an outlier? Why was he able to do that where other guys? He had a great support system. His dad, Ponce, was like, had a, had a great plan for him. And, um, you know, all the whole step of the way. It was good. It seemed like physically. Not every kid that comes in, regardless of ratings, oh, no. couldn't couldn't handle that. What was he physically that was able to? to step I mean, in? obviously, he's a huge talent and got a you know, bunch of genetic potential. I just think he was more prepared because he had the opportunity through his support system to give him that you know kind of all the tools that he needed to get ready. And that doesn't happen much. I guess that you're a big fan of Tommy Eichmann. Um, I love Tommy Eichmann. Doesn't say much, but tell me what people should know about Tommy Eichmann. Um, Tommy really cares. Um, he's a tough guy. I think he he plays football the way, at least I like it. I mean, I like the way he plays football, and I know a lot of others. And he just, he, he's a leader now. He, he's. He doesn't say much, maybe in front of the cameras, but he talks. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. The prerequisite for like linebackers now is the tough four They don't like to talk to us. I don't know, because we have some linebackers that like, that like to talk to you guys. Oh, yeah. Really, everybody. Still, love yeah. CJ loves to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we've had like Ryan like to talk, yeah. and uh, there's been there's been some. Guys. I guess flipping back over. To Darren Lee likes to talk too. <laughs> uh, still no, it's alright. Yeah. Uh, flipping back over to, to the quarterbacks, uh, CJ was pretty small when he got here. He, he's obviously developed. Powell, not so much. Obviously, still developing. When you get a guy like as small as Devin Brown is, what's the first step for him to try to get there physically where he needs it? Well, you got to see, you got to look where he's at um, with all the uh, assessment tools that we have. And then look at his speed, look at his movement, agility all those type things, and then you develop a plan, get with our nutritionist, Kayla Olson, check body fat, muscle mass, all, all the things that we look at, and then set a plan up for him, and then set goals, periodic goals, short-term goals, and then hopefully he comes back, and then by the end of the summer, he's where we, we need him to be, at least you know, doing it safely and then productively. And Are you seeing that from Devin right now? Oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's getting better. Nick, when you look back at the Michigan game from last year, does that force you to reevaluate when you see you know your team getting beat up a line of scrimmage like that? Yeah, I mean, I think if you don't, I think everybody had to look in the mirror. Uh, everybody, everybody in this building, from players, coaches, athletic trainers, nutritionists, equipment managers, everything, and just kind of go back and look and, and what happened, why, and then turn over every stone and try to come up with a plan so what do you think it was that this team lacked I mean a lot of things we just talked about to be honest with you. For, for what are maybe you know this off season what are maybe the you know biggest points of emphasis for you that to make sure that this team is more prepared for this year yeah I think that we've been talking about the whole time's leadership um, all the great you know, great, great, great teams that you've been around, they've had great leaders. Obviously, you got to have talent, really good players, but the leadership, um, leadership 
because coaches aren't around all the time. Personnel isn't around all the time. And that locker room is, you know, that's, that's what matters. Because you've, because you've had a level of success in the always beating Michigan, winning the Big Ten every year, to not do those things, how much has that changed your attitudes around here, changed the way you've done things around here? Um, I think um, I think it's I don't want to say perked everybody up, but I it's yeah, I think the if the volume was already turned up, you're looking for a power button that gives twelve. Yeah, twelve or break it or start you know smash it and get another one with more power. And, you know, I just obviously we know how important that game is. And, you know, all those goals and if you don't reach those goals, you gotta you gotta figure out why and. and uh, so at least in, in our area, we try to do, you know, you try to progress, you try to be innovative, you try to, you know, I don't know how much Jerry's talked to you guys about the uh, sports science initiative that we have really been, you know, diving into in the last, you know, four to five years. So we're just, again, just trying to, you know, develop, be innovative, and trying to be the best that we can be. We have a we have a committee. It's called the Pit the Pit Group performance innovation team, which involves Department of Athletics and then the Human Performance Collaborative across campus with, with uh, Josh Hagan and some of his group and Dr. Kramer and our group and it's uh, our sports scientist, uh, Nick Domicone and Adam Stewart, Kayla Olson and myself and all of our areas and just really looking at how we can do things better, more efficiently, more effectively. And just trying to progress yeah, as we move forward. Been no, it, it was before that, but again, I think just kind of speed it up a little bit. Let's, let's just make sure we're on top Max, of the weird, Yeah, Max. Weird question. But in hindsight, could you almost see that coming? Well, I, you're talking about the. Uh, well, I think you know. Uh, you, no, I mean. I mean, I mean, I, I, a as horrible as it is, I mean, I know that's like part of the center here. Could that be a good thing for the future program to, 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 to send off the place to make sure you know it could just happen on that? I think it's got everybody's attention, which is always a good thing. So. Is there somebody who surprised you from winter workouts with what they were able to accomplish? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I like a lot of those younger guys that came in in January. I don't want to give names because somebody gets mad all the time. So, um, but they they uh, they picked it up quick and, and progressed and played pretty well in spring ball. And now they gotta, you know, we'll see how they are when they come back. When you, uh, sorry, <laughs> when uh, when a guy comes in like Jim Knowles to kind of a revamp a defense or defensive coaching time, I'm curious, does that change when you look at his film? Do you have to build guys up differently? Does your approach change just based on the expectation of what kind of defense or play call is going to be in the class? I don't think from the expectation, maybe of the scheme, expectation is to stop the offense regardless of what kind of defense. But sometimes in the scheme, you might. You know, might look for different body types, yeah. so you know we'll work around. Did, did it, was there a position or somewhere like with a certain position where you're like, yeah, they, these guys need to get a little bit leaner, a little bit bigger? Or? We look at everybody. We look at everybody like individually yeah. and, and kind of what. Obviously, you can't play. It'd be hard to play defensive end at 220 pounds. So you know, we look at that. It's, it, it, it'd be hard to play. Hard to cover guys if you're a bigger, a giant, like a giant safety. So just try to avoid your, what's your job description, where you're at individually, and then try to improve that. Um, and try to be the best but, player you can be. But it was nothing out of the ordinary. No, 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 no. With the quarterback, how did you 